bailout? What the heck is a bailout? I can bail out my boat. I can bail out my no good brother-in-law. But what the heck is a bank bailout? Or a government bailout? These are good questions, aren't they? Because like a very nasty infectious disease, there is a lot of this going around. To understand bailouts, first we need to understand what money is today. And that's no easy task. Not because it isn't basically simple. In fact, it is so simple, people simply don't believe it. The difficulty is that we have been taught some very dangerous make-believe and have to clear away ingrained but misleading ideas embedded in the language we use to talk about banking. Today, money is not valuable in itself like a gold coin, and it isn't just printed by the government, as the news footage would have you believe. Money is debt, all of it, even paper cash. All of it was created simply by a promise to pay it back in money. The only money that isn't created as debt is coins. The government mints coins and sells them at face value to the banks. Cash and coin are what are known as legal tender, the only real money that the courts will enforce as payment of a money debt. Despite the misleading term deposits, bank accounts are not a box at the bank where your legal tender is deposited. Bank accounts are just promises of legal tender on demand. Your bank account is an IOU, pure and simple, and an empty one at that. Bank accounts are just a record of what the bank owes you in legal tender cash if you ask for it. And most of us never do, except for small amounts. All of our big transactions we do by transferring bank credit itself. In most developed countries, 97% of those bank promises are promises of legal tender that does not exist. So where does legal tender come from? It comes from the central bank of the nation. Some central banks are privately owned. Some are owned by the public. Both supply the legal tender of the nation by printing up paper cash for the cost of the printing and then using that cash to buy interest-bearing national debt at face value. Member banks have accounts at the central bank that are also legal tender on demand, but credit at the central bank is a promise of legal tender that does exist or can be printed upon request. So why do banks need bailouts? Well, because a bank loan is a promise of legal tender that the bank does not have. This promise, the bank credit, was created in exchange for the so-called borrower's promise to pay it back. This balances the bank's books. If the bank's promise of legal tender isn't returned to the bank and extinguished, the bank can't reissue this debt as a new loan. It has to stay within its risk limits and government regulations. Banks must make loans to stay in business. When money is created as debt, the economy needs a constant stream of new bank loans to prevent a disastrous crash. Why? Economists don't seem to have an answer. That's because they are oblivious to money being created as debt. They are even more oblivious to the fact that this bank credit money, once created as one debt, gets lent again as existing money. Taking these rather obvious possibilities into account, there is a very simple explanation that anyone can understand. Every dollar created as debt by a bank gets lent a second and a third time as existing money. Once paid back to the bank, that debt money no longer exists, but the second and third debts of it still do. 
unless bank lending creates enough new debt money on time, the second and third borrowers will default by mathematical certainty, because the money to pay their debts does not exist. However, banks cannot force borrowers to take these loans. When borrowers refuse to borrow enough new money into existence on time, for any reason, the money supply shrinks and everyone is in danger of default and taking the banks down. Too many defaults will soon push the economy toward collapse. Therefore, when too much bank credit is not returned to the bank, and the bank is too big to let fail, the bank must be bailed out so that it can continue to make its so-called loans. The national taxpayers must go even deeper into debt, at the point of a gun actually, to create more legal tender or base money for the banks to base their promises on. But many governments are already hopelessly mired in perpetually increasing debt. And adding to the problem, just the interest payments on this debt already exceed the willingness or ability of the taxpayers to pay it. So, to pay government debts, governments are forced to sell even more bonds. Who do they sell them to? The same banks that have no money. This system is a kind of insanity with some magic thrown in. Banks that have no money suddenly have lots of it when government sells them bonds because it is the taxpayer debt that creates the money. Going ever further into debt to pay off past debts is like trying to escape a hole by digging deeper. Now who can bail out a national government that can no longer sell its own sovereign debt to bondholders? Only the taxpayers of other national governments can by selling more sovereign debt of their own. But that just puts them further into debt. In fact, because money is debt, it is quite possible for everyone to be hopelessly in debt to banks despite the unprecedented real wealth in the world which we, the so-called borrowers, created. The banks don't create wealth, so why are we in debt to them? The truth is that banks create money as money debt and steal real wealth with it. And for as long as this money as a promise to pay it back system continues, there will be no escape. The bankers can take everything. To comprehend how today's money system works, watch Money as Debt and Money as Debt 2 Promises Unleashed and read up on the subject at moneyasdebt.net. There is an alternative. It is the liberated alternative people have resorted to whenever money was scarce. It was a beautifully developed local economic system in medieval markets, and with today's technology, it can be global and local at the same time. To understand the amazing potentials of adopting an entirely different concept of money, please support the author by visiting moneyasdebt.net.